In this video, we will take a look at Madagascar's climate change, the famine, how it happened, and steps to prevent it from happening again. So before this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for future updates. Madagascar is an island country in the Indian Ocean, off the coast of Southeast Africa. Its official name is the Republic of Madagascar, and it was previously known as the Malagasy Republic. The country is made up of the island of Madagascar and several smaller peripheral islands. Madagascar split from the Indian Peninsula around 88 million years ago, following the prehistoric breakup of the supercontinent Gondwana, allowing native plants and animals to evolve in relative isolation. But now, Madagascar anthropogenic climate change has led to a series of droughts in the Malagasy Islands. This is partly due to deforestation, which decreases rainfall because it reduces evapotranspiration. The forest loss also contributes directly to warming the environment, since the low albedo of deforested landscapes enhances absorption of solar radiation. Because of this climate change, crops are withering away in this country. It's not just Madagascar. Other countries across Africa also feel the effects of drought caused by global temperature increases and El Nino, including Ethiopia, Sudan, and Somalia. Increasingly unpredictable extreme, weather events have rendered traditional farming methods virtually impossible, even for those who can afford mechanized equipment or access to irrigation systems. Droughts are making it harder for already vulnerable populations to survive. Without we don't have the resources that we need, says Jean Louis Robinson, president of Madagascar's National Higher Institute for Water and Forestry Studies. That is why people are dying in their homes without having food. Not only do they have no water, but also they have nothing to eat. 70% of the country's population lives on less than dollar two a day. 80% live in rural areas with limited access to transportation and markets. And 50% rely directly on agriculture for income or sustenance. So when there's no rain, everyone suffers. The increased frequency of drought is also projected to spur population displacements. Tens of thousands are already fleeing the seven regions most severely affected by the current crisis, according to UNHCR spokesperson Andrej Mahesik. This could be just a preview for what's to come. Scientists say it's likely that El Nino will happen again this year. So how can Madagascar and other developing nations adapt? The answer starts with recognizing that there is no one-size-fits-all solution. One thing needs to be made clear, says Robinson, who has studied climate change since its arrival in Madagascar in 1993. Adaptation is country-specific. One option is to plant hardier crops that can better withstand drought conditions, like cassava, maize, or beans. The problem with this strategy is that it puts reliance on genetically modified organisms, GMOS however, drought-resistant they may be which can't be quickly introduced in countries where GMO seeds are not widely available. Another approach is to seed clouds by spraying them with seawater or ice particles. And another is for communities themselves to adapt by learning how to properly manage water resources, or building schools closer together, so children don't have to walk as far between home and classroom, reducing their exposure time outside in the heat of the day when temperatures are hotter than ever before. Like many countries on the front lines of climate change, Madagascar must decide for itself what strategies to pursue and when. You have to look at all these adaptation options, says Robinson, who adds that countries will need help with funding. And it's not just the economics, there are also political challenges to contend with. It can be difficult for developing countries to accept outside aid, a problem known as the aid curse. The latest outbreak of Ebola in West Africa is a tragic example. By 2015, international organizations had managed to raise 9 billion US donations and pledges from governments and private companies, but they were unable to get workers into affected regions because of resistance from local communities. One of the most significant challenges may simply be the people of Madagascar not knowing where and how to begin. This ignorance has deadly consequences. According to the latest figures from the World Food Program, 5 million people across Madagascar are currently food insecure, a number that's expected to double by September if nothing is done. In this video, we already mentioned possible solutions, such as planting hardier crops that can better withstand drought conditions, 
and seeding the clouds by spraying them with seawater or ice particles. Also, for the communities themselves to adapt by learning how to properly manage water resources, as well as building schools closer together, so children don't have to walk as far between home and classroom. But another possible solution might be for communities to develop strategies that lower the risk of wildfire. This could be done by using natural resources like dung or wood more intensely, meaning gathering these materials takes priority over hunting. Other ideas include developing better early warning systems, storing food reserves during good years to see families through drought-stricken ones, changing farming techniques, creating economic incentives for rural populations not to move en masse into cities or shifting government, spending away from military towards public health, as well as introducing fish farms so communities can get protein from fish instead of cows or even installing a cloud brightening system that would spray aerosols into the sky to increase cloud cover and enhance rainfall. These might be well-meaning but ultimately misguided attempts at addressing the root causes of climate change and food insecurity in Madagascar's rural communities. As we look at the current drought issue ravaging Madagascar, these issues have left more than 1 million people food insecure and hundreds of thousands of children at risk of malnutrition. And with the drought expected to last another 18 months or longer, concerns are growing that it could contribute to an increase in cases of malnutrition and even permanent stunting among children if they don't get enough nutritious food while their brains are still developing during these critical stages. So what can we do about climate change and poverty in Madagascar? Here are five things. Remember from this video consider these points as tidbits of information only, not necessarily thoroughly researched ideas for discussion purposes only. Number 1. Empower local communities not to rely on outside help. Give them food, for example, cows that graze naturally instead of grain-fed cows. Also, don't give them things like cloud brightening because those efforts are useless when looking at the whole picture. They only make small changes over time. Even those small changes add up, but overall they are still insignificant compared to what CO2 does to our environment. Number 2. If you must give them something, make sure they have the capability to maintain it. For example, if you give them cows, they need to continue making money for food by selling their milk or whatever is produced from the cow to keep being able to afford food to live. Number 3. Give people knowledge of how climate change pertains to them so they are aware of what is going on with their environment and can try and fix it themselves, maybe through planting trees or something along those lines. Number 4. Teach them about sustainable development so that future generations will be able to sustain themselves and not rely on outside help. Even though we know unless we do something major about climate change, even this may not necessarily save future generations. Number 5. Find sustainable ways of providing food, such as fish farming, instead of cutting down forests to make farms, so we don't lose even more resources taking away from our environment or cloud brightening because it is only a temporary solution and not worth the cost. Give us your opinion on how we can help people such as those in Madagascar. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.